James Crumbly, the father of the Oxford school shooter, has a hearing ahead of his trial that is expected to begin in two weeks. His attorney is trying to block jurors from any evidence about his son's mental health or text messages with the shooter. He has also requested a change of venue. He is charged with four counts of involuntary ma manslaughter because of the prosecution alleges that he did not do enough to prevent the school shooting. Yes. So I want to make sure you can hear us. I can hear you. If at any time you can't hear anything going on in the courtroom, please let me know. Thank you. All right. All right. So I have the uh, former client uh, waiver form that we're going to go through first. Thank correct? you, Judge. Mr. Crumpley is also filling it out and signing it as we speak, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Crumley, could you uh, raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth to help you guide? Yes. All right, you can put your hand down, and can you tell me your full name? James Robert Crumley. And how old are you? 47. Can you read, write, and understand the English language? Yes. Can you hear and understand me? Yes. Could you hear and understand your attorney? Yes. Are you satisfied with her advice? Yes. You understand that you are charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter? Yes. And do you understand that you have a right to conflict-free representation? Yes. Although there was a formerly joint representation in this case, do you understand that attorney Shannon Smith uh, represented your uh, wife, Jennifer Crumley, and that Ms. Mariel Lehman now only represents you? Yes. And do you understand that your own interests and your co-defendant's interests maybe or um, later maybe or become material adverse yes all right do you understand that both your attorney and your co-defendant's attorney have indicated that there uh, was previously a conflict of interest between you and your co-defendant and that is why we have separate trials yes although although there are now separate trials do you understand that your co-defendant is a former client of your attorney yes do you understand that the duty of confidentiality continues after the client-lawyer relationship is terminated, which means that your attorney still must protect the confidentiality of privileged information provided by your co-defendant? Yes. Do you understand that given the duties owed to, to former clients, your attorney may be limited in their representation? For example, your attorney may not be able to use privileged information obtained from your co-defendant to further your own interests? Yes. Do you understand that these limitations can affect things, such as deci decisions relating to the matters of trial strategy, <clears throat> for example, the pres presentation of evidence at trial, the examination of witnesses, the decision to call certain witnesses, also potential negotiations in terms of a sentence agreement, and also arguments made at sentencing? Yes. Do you consent to attorney Shannon Smith continuing to solely represent uh, your wife, Ms. Jennifer Crumley, and attorney Mary Lehman continuing to solely represent you? Yes. Have you had the opportunity to consult with your retained counsel as it relates to the, to the issue of your representation? Yes. Do you understand that by entering the waiver, you will not be able to raise these issues in an appeal should you be convicted? Yes. Do you have any questions uh, about any of the uh, issues raised on this form for either me or your attorney? No. All right. Thank you. Are you satisfied? I am, thank you. Okay. All right, so um, at the moment, uh, there's been a number of motions zooming back and forth, um, but today I think the only motion uh, we're addressing is a motion uh, filed by the defense with regard to the, the prosecutor's uh, added witnesses. Correct? Yes, yes. Correct, Your Honor. Uh, I know that's your motion, but I think I'd like to ask for the prosecutor uh, to provide an offer of proof with regard to these uh, witnesses. I think that would be helpful. Yes, I, Your Honor. I, I know them only by their initials. You all have the police reports and uh, numerous, numerous documents, and uh, so I'm not as familiar with some of the witnesses. Thank you, Judge. As a little bit of background, Judge, we amended our witness list 30 days prior to trial. We did so while the jury was still deliberating in the case of People versus Jennifer Crumbly. <clears throat> we are acutely aware of the impact it has on witnesses to testify, not just about what happened to them, but on national television. 
So when we amended the witness list, we did so before we had the opportunity to speak with them to confirm that they would be available and ready to testify the next case. We have, and they are cooperative. They are ready and available to testify should they be called upon. We added four names to the witness list. Three that were identified as minors. Two were actually have reached the age of majority. I was going to ask you that. Yes, Judge. So we would only seek to have those individuals testify. Initials KO and RF. Those individuals are both above the age of 18. Are you um, abandoning your request to call HA? That's correct, Judge. Okay. So we have confirmed with their families as well that they are ready, willing, and available should they be called upon. Okay. So again, we did so with as much notice of defense counsel, again, it was 30 days prior to trial, because we are aware that this court does run a very tight ship. As the court uh, recalls the last trial, we were delayed from weather. We had a witness who had COVID. We had another witness with child care issues. We had yet another witness who was on vacation. We had to reorganize our proofs and presentation on the fly. So we want to be able to present our case in an efficient manner. We don't seek to expand the record necessarily, but we do want to be prepared to have opportunities to present our case should one or more witness become unavailable for any particular reason. Okay, well, I, I guess that's one of my questions because you have uh, Molly Darnell and Chris, Christy Gibson Marshall who testified in the previous trial testifying in this trial as well. That's right? correct. Because I, I guess I read, I don't know if it was a free press in the Detroit News, um, interpretation of the addition of the witnesses that maybe they're supposed to take the place of other witnesses who uh, felt too traumatized to testify. So, Again, I believe that was the interpretation, Judge, and if it was articulated that way in the motion, then that was I don't, I don't think it was. Okay, thank you, Judge. I thought maybe I was mistaken. So. I, I, I believe so, Judge. So, so I'm, I'm interested in, in that. Yes, Judge. They are available and they are cooperative and will be testifying in this case, Judge. Mm -hmm. Again, when we, when we amended the witness list, it was right after they testified while the jury was still deliberating. And we are aware of the impact it has on, on everybody, not just civilian witnesses, but police officers as well. So we, we wanted to be, to proceed in an abundance of caution. They have options should we need those options but since the time that i filed and i communicated this to defense counsel as well and i and we had private conversations regarding this and, and i said the intent was not to add a number of witnesses it was to be prepared in the event that someone would have to drop out the last second judge okay are, are you able to give the court an offer of proof with regard to korf and a, as a separate issue kyle keezer yes judge if i may i'll start with mr keezer okay. so Mr. Keezer is the original purchaser of the six hour nine millimeter handgun from the firearm store in Oxford. He bought that firearm in May of 2021. He used the firearm three times. He sold the firearm back to that same firearm store in Oxford on November the 13th of 2021. That's the gun that was purchased by this defendant, James Crumbly, on November the 26th. Okay. So he was added in response to statements made by Jennifer Crumbly's attorney during her presentation of the case, as well as Jennifer Crumbly's testimony. Now, I don't know what counsel's argument is going to be regarding the firearm. I don't know if Mr. Crumbly is going to testify or what he might say. So we added that individual. He's potentially a rebuttal witness. Obviously, we have no obligation to identify rebuttal witnesses. However, should the argument be presented in a certain fashion similar to that of Jennifer Crumbly, I think the background of that firearm how it was stored, how it was bought and sold would be relevant to the jury. So he was added after hearing the co-defendant's case in chief, Judge. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not following. He, you're adding him for the purposes of rebuttal only? Not necessarily. Okay. So it, again, it depends. I don't know how counsel is going to, to litigate her case. And obviously she's under no obligation to, to let us know that. I, I was struggling with the relevance he might bring to the case. So, so again, he, he bought the eventual murder weapon in May. Okay. He used it three times. He was provided with a cable lock. He never used the cable lock. He identified that as the same cable lock sold back to the firearm store, okay. which in turn will be identified by those witnesses as the same cable lock sold to Mr. Crumbly. Okay, I get it now. So right. again, um, okay. and with KO and RF, both were students. Well, let me make let me make sure that Mr. Keeser would potentially uh, be in your case in chief, but you're asking for him on rebuttal. Well, at a minimum, potentially on case in chief, and it really just depends on how the case okay. progresses, Judge. All right. Okay. 
Thank you. Um, K O and R F judge, both students, both wounded, November the 30th, 2021. They were both in the 200 hallway and they were struck as the defendant's son emerged from the bathroom adjacent to room 258. Okay, well, I, I guess breaking this down, the fact that they were wounded is potentially not relevant. What they saw is potentially relevant. I well, they, they, okay. they both can provide testimony of seeing, they didn't identify the shooter as who the shooter was, they didn't know him prior to, okay. but they saw a student dressed in all in black. RF saw the gun raised. She thought, saw what she thought was an orange tip. Turns out it was actually the, the muzzle flash of the firearm as it was fired at her. At her. At All her. Right. Correct. Okay. Both were wounded, both survived, obviously. Okay. And they were they were together in the 200 hallway, if the court recalls from the video, in the, the, the group of uh, young women next to the window. Okay. So. All right, but don't we have a video of that? We do have a video, Judge, but and the video obviously is extremely relevant, extremely important, because the shooting is why we are here. Mm -hmm. And when we have actual eyewitness testimony available, it is important for the jury to hear that perspective. Okay, what about KL? KL was next to RF. Okay, so why isn't this cumulative of either the video or Mary, uh, Molly Darnell or Krista Gibson Marshall? Molly Darnell and Ms. Gibson Marshall were in different parts of the school. They had different interactions with the shooter. KO and RF are the two individuals who are above the age of 18 with the best perspective of what happened on November 30th as a shooter emerged from the bathroom. Okay, is there, is there, is there anything you want to add about, um, with regard to an offer of proof? Because really this is Ms. Lehman's motion, but I thought it'd be more important to um, have you start so that I would know what you are asking to present, so. Yes, sir. And again, just, we are limited to the individuals we can call from that hallway because two were, were murdered in that hallway. Mm -hmm. So these are the two individuals that have the best perspective who are now above the age of 18, who can not just, who can actually testify as to what they saw, what they felt, what they heard as a shooter emerged from the bathroom and opened fire. Okay. It's not the same evidence as the video. The video has no sound. Um, the video does not give that sort of depiction, that eye-level depiction, that eyewitness testimony. So it's not cumulative. If we called every single student who was in that hallway, it could be cumulative. But we're being very selective in who we're choosing to call to testify because we want to limit it to the individuals who can provide the appropriate context and appropriate perspective that is not identical to anyone else. I guess I'm gonna, I, I've been doing a deep dive into 611 and 403. Um, when you put the black robe on, you, get, you learn how to uh, read people's minds. So Ms. Lehman is gonna tell me about U.S. versus McCray, uh, which talks about uh, 403's major function um, is limited to excluding a matter of scant or cumulative probative force dragged in by the heels for the sake of its prejudicial effect. 403 is meant to relax the iron rule of evidence to permit the trial judge to preserve the fairness of the proceedings by exclusion despite its relevance. It's not designed to, admit, to, permit, to permit the court to even out the weight of the evidence to mitigate a crime or to make a contest whether it is little or not. And that's from that um, McCray case and there's a discussion of 403. So I don't want to steal your thunder, but. Your Honor, I, I did file the motion, and I'm certain that the court has reviewed that motion. Um, as the court suspected, I am going to address specifically 403, um, especially in light of the offers of proof uh, that Mr. Keyes just provided to the court regarding KO and RF. Your Honor, the, while I, I can't imagine what those two students went through on November 30th of 2021, their testimony is not relevant in the trial against James Crumbly. Um, he's been charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter. He's not charged with assaulting anyone with a firearm. He's not charged with shooting anyone and wounding anyone. He's charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter for the actions of his son. Um, as the court correctly noted, Molly Darnell and Christy Gibson Marshall both testified in the prior trial and testified in relation to, I believe, in relation to the video that was admitted. Well, would you agree that they were not in the same location um, as, as the two witnesses, KO and RF, 
KO and RF to just are both um, outside the bathroom. Correct. Yeah. The 200 hallway, it's been identified as the shorter of the 200 hallways. Okay. Um, I thought that in Ms. Lehman's motion, I think some of her information was gleaned from the victim impact state, uh, statements and the shooter sentencing, but I think there was an indication that KO was a friend of uh, Tate and that RF was standing somewhere else. Maybe it's AJ who rendered help, but we're-, we're AJ. AJ, right, but AJ we're not calling. So are, are there, um, would KO and RF be given the same testimony? That's, were they in the same hall? I, it sounds like they were in the same hall, Your Honor. I believe Mr. Keith indicated they were standing right next to each other at the time of the shooting. Okay. Um, Regardless, I don't think that either of them are, are relevant in this case, Your Honor. I think that the court can agree, and I, I think that Mr. Keese would likely agree that, that their testimony, the primary purpose of their testimony is to inflame the emotions of the jury. I mean, their testimony or the, whatever they can provide can also be provided in a video. The whole purpose of admitting the video and not having sound on the video was to lessen the prejudicial impact on the jury. It, we litigated this previously, and this has been discussed with the court. The purpose of, of the, the video and admitting the video is to show the jury what actually occurred during that shooting. The shooting is caught on the video, Your Honor. So the yeah, court has previously that. decided that the video is being admitted. Yeah. I, I still don't believe that it's relevant in this case, Your Honor. However, I know that that's the court's ruling. So allowing the testimony of, the, of two students who were not only in the hallway, but were also wounded by the shooter, Your Honor, I, I just don't find it relevant. And I think that it is, even if the court finds it relevant, it's highly and highly unfairly prejudicial in this case, in light of the other evidence that the prosecution can present. And again, we've, we've agreed to, we've offered to stipulate to some of these facts so that these witnesses don't have to testify, so that the video doesn't have to be played. The prosecution doesn't want to do that, Judge. Well, they don't, they don't have to. And they don't have to. It's their case to present, Your Honor. However, when it comes to these two students, their testimony, even if the court finds it relevant, is unfairly prejudicial to James Crumbly. Well, that's, um, Rand Berry says that all, although relevant evidence may be excluded if its probative value is substantially outweighed by the danger of unfair prejudice, confusion of the issues, or misleading the jury, or by considerations of undue delay, waste of time, or needless presentation of cumulative evidence. That's Rand Berry, 123, Michigan, 179. Yes, right? Judges, I, I thought I heard a question directed at the prosecution from the court. So. Uh, one thing, I, I definitely do not agree that the video is being played to inflame the jury. Perhaps counsel misspoke when she said the prosecutor agrees that's the purpose. That's certainly not the purpose. And also, Judge, the shooting is relevant. This is a homicide case. The shooting is it evidence is. of the gross negligence. So um, the two individuals we identified, they were not looking at the same thing. They were not oriented the same direction. They have different perspectives. And again, these are the only two surviving members of the hallway that we have confirmed with their families that they are willing and able to testify in this trial, Judge. This is, we are, again, acutely aware of the toll it takes on individuals to testify. There's members of law enforcement who still can't talk about that day. And we're also aware to not put cumulative evidence in front of the jury because it doesn't have any, it doesn't have any purpose, Judge. So we're aware of all that. And just because we've added the witness list doesn't necessarily mean we're gonna call all of them too. We still have 13 days to decide which witnesses will, will be presented at trial in which order. Anything further? I'm, I'm probably going to write something. I wasn't, I, I guess, um, Ms. Lincoln, you didn't uh, um, address Kyle Keezer. I was sort of racking my brain to see why he's relevant, but now I think he is. Your Honor, I, I addressed him in my motion. I, I maintain the argument that I don't believe he's relevant. Well, if he, um, <clears throat> he apparently might have some information about the cable lock and whether the cable lock was in the same condition. Um, if he's shown the cable lock during the course of the trial, if he testifies it's in the same condition it was in at the time that he resold the gun, um, that could be relevant. So I'm, I'm going to allow him uh, to testify. As to KO and RF, um, I'm probably going to spend a little time. All right, but I will let you know very quickly. I've issued some orders on some of the other motions. Um, and we'll issue some more orders this week. And I got another motion last night. So it's good that I don't have any other cases. Um, what else can I do for you? 
The council and I spoke about meeting with the court briefly in chambers, talk about logistics, if that's sure. agreeable. Um, or maybe in the jury room, if you want. I, there, I don't have anything to ask you about, but if, you, if you'd like to meet, talk about logistics, that would be fine. There's just one issue that I think we'd like to discuss with the court. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. All right.